What is going on, party people? So I just made a discovery that is um, very exciting, uh, and I wanted to share it with you all because, um, I don't know, I feel like good news in the Infusionsoft app is not as common as I would like it to be. I am oftentimes frustrated by things um, underperforming or not working as well as I would hope or not progressing as quickly as I would hope. But today is the opposite. Today I have a positive thing that I have discovered. Um, and so I wanna share it with you guys because I feel like this community can always use a little extra positivity. Um, all right, so here is what I'm talking about. Um, a few months ago, uh, some might say prematurely, uh, I published this blog post um, about liquid content, which is effectively conditional content for Infusionsoft. Um, now, in my defense, it was supposed to be released by now. They have delayed that a couple different times, and it is slated to be uh, released in January of 2020, so hopefully not too long away. Um, but here is where I'm going with this. Um, you can use liquid content to conditionally display uh, sections of the email, uh, but the caveat uh, that I added in here when I was talking about drawbacks um, was that uh, it really only seems to work with text, uh, which is great and still is pretty powerful, uh, but longer term it would be great if we could use this for buttons and images um, and that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's just sort of like not super surprising, but that's where it was at. So this is if you haven't played with uh, liquid content, I know it's been enabled for some people, but if you haven't yet played with it, uh, the way it works is you come to this marketing dynamic content section, and then you can use this uh, little builder environment to generate your code. Something like this. This is one that I built relatively recently. Uh, if the contacts tags uh, in include tag ID 502, that means that they are a partner of mine. So I can write a paragraph that says, hey, as a partner, dot, dot, dot. Um, and then, you know, or if their tag contains 1028, it means that they're a consultant who works with small businesses. So I can say, as a consultant who works with small businesses, um, and then, you know, if they contain 530, that's a blog subscriber. So I can say, think of this as the blog post for the week. And then somebody who doesn't fit in any of those categories, I might start the sentence with just because you love monkey pot or whatever. So what I do is I use this area to build um, placeholders like this. Um, and then I hop into whatever email I'm going to use. Um, and I paste in that code. Um, and then I adjust the different sections. So this is a blog email from a few weeks ago. Some of you probably received this, uh, but you would have only seen uh, either this section or um, this section, right? There, you know, you can see there's two different areas where based on whether or not you are uh, registered for a webinar, you're gonna see, uh, you know, hey, remember the next OG webinar is on this date and you can add it to your calendar here. And then uh, if they're not, uh, registered, but they are an OG member, uh, they see a link to that. And then if they are not an OG member, or if you are not an OG member, you would have seen this one that just says, hey, here's a replay from a different webinar. So the way that that works is, you know, you add those three different sections, and then you can preview here. Um, and only one of them displays based on the tags that that contact has. And then similarly, um, I've got you know, two different sentences describing this video. Um, if you are an OG member, it says, hey, OG member Ali asked this question, check it out. And then if you're not, it says, I had a great question from one of the OG members, right? And you can see again, um, when you preview, it just shows one of those based on what tags the contact has. So lots of potential behind this type of functionality. Uh, it's basically doing decision diamonds, but within an email, within the line of an email, within the sentences, within a paragraph, it's, it's um, you know, the possibilities are endless. And so I'm really excited about that. Uh, but the problem has been that I couldn't easily uh, use it to hide images and to hide buttons. You could really only use it within a paragraph or within text because of the way that the dynamic content uh, short codes work. And so that's where I'm going with this video is... Um, I don't know if I'm slow on the uptake, and maybe this is obvious to everyone else, but just today, I had the idea of, well, what if I split these little short codes into their own paragraphs? 
what if I broke them up and put them in different text blocks? And so I did that with this email just to see if I could hide the sections in between. So here is the first part, right? And then I have an image and then I have the second part of that same code. And then I have an image and it's, these are just random images and the third part and the fourth part. And um, sure enough, it works. So based on the tags, it's only showing me the fourth offer. So if you wanted to send an email with an image or you know a button, et cetera, to these uh, individuals, you certainly could. And to me, that just takes this to a whole nother level. So uh, like if I remove this, right? Right now, uh, register here with one click or check out the details here uh, is what we are seeing, right? So preview uh, just ends the paragraph with, um, yeah, register here with one click. But if I wanted to add a button to that, uh, now, I mean, I guess this was probably available previously, but it just didn't occur to me and it may not have occurred to you guys. Um, you can move that down to its own paragraph and then pop the button in before it. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. There we go. And so register here. Let's make it, you know, bright orange and we'll just, uh, you know, I don't even think we need a link for now. But when you preview it, uh, that button should show um, as well because it's wrapped within those brackets. So I guess the takeaway is that these brackets don't need to be in the same text paragraph, which was sort of what I had assumed based on how the generator works, the content generator. Um, and so if you are going to use conditional content, um, it's powerful enough on its own, but man, it is infinitely more flexible when you remove the barriers of having it in individual um, blocks. And you could, you know, you could wrap entire sections of the email. So you could have one email that effectively has a version A and a version B, uh, you know, split testing offers is possible here or removing call to actions or um, it's really, this just blows the doors wide open in terms of where this could be used for us. And so I wanted to, to share that with everyone because um, as exciting as conditional content is as a concept, it is um, actually even more exciting than I originally thought it was going to be. And um, I just can't wait for them to get this out to everyone because I know um, things have a tendency to feel stagnant when we don't see momentum within the product. And this is going to be, um, I think a milestone feature for Infusionsoft and Infusionsoft users. Um, and so I wanted to share that with you guys to make it that much more powerful. So if I'm missing other things, if you see additional ways for liquid content to be uh, that much more um, useful, then please feel free to share in the comments. Or um, if you think this video was valuable and could benefit other people, feel free to share it with them as well. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.